woman was knocked to the ground by Japanese. North Korea's last princess gives a speech in Japan with oppressed North Korean laborers standing on the stage. Seeing the bruises on the little girl's arms, Ia couldn't hold back any longer. She took off her hat and spoke in Korea. Her inspiring words had the laborers coming forward to pray for her protection. But Ia couldn't protect herself, and as soon as her speech was over, she was beaten by the Japanese. Ia was the favorite daughter of the king of Joseon, but her birth coincided with Japan's annexation of the Korean peninsula and political unrest in the country. To protect his daughter, Gaon Seon betrothed her to Han, a clan member. They were very shy when they first met, and they developed a fondness for each other. But before the marriage could be consummated, Gaon Seon's intentions were discovered by the Japanese and he was poisoned. Diak was forced to go to Japan as a hostage without father's protection. On her way out, her mother is grief-stricken and gives her a thermos cup. Diak then changed into a Japanese kimono and left her homeland with one of her most trusted attendants. The Japanese told her they'd send her home when she finished her studies. But when Diak finished her studies as promised and asked to go back, the Japanese changed their mind and told her to stay here and marry. Diak doesn't want to marry a Japanese man, so she secretly searches for an opportunity to return to her country. That's when she is approached by you, the grandson of Gyeong Seon and a member of the Korean resistance. He has been lurking in Japan all these years secretly rescuing his compatriots in Japan, and he is willing to help Diak return to Korea. Diak is thrilled to hear of such a stopgap organization, and joins you in their secret meetings. But someone tipped them off, and the Japanese found the place. When it's a matter of life and death, a man in black appears and rescues Diak. He takes Diak to a safe place. She is Han, who was once engaged to Diak. He pretended to be a Japanese officer, but he's been secretly helping his Korean compatriots for years. He is willing to find a way to help Diak to return to Korea and bring hope to Diak's bleak life. Diak has mixed feelings about his former friend, but at least she has some comfort and support in heart. One day, however, the Japanese asked Diak to give a speech to the Korean laborers in favor of Japan, which Diak refuses to do. But the Japanese tell her that Diak's mother is sick and will die soon. If Diak doesn't give the speech, she won't be able to see her mother for the last time. Diak is so sad that she has to agree. In the evening, Han found her and asked her why she agreed. Diak said that even though she was a princess, she was still her mother's daughter. She finally gets up to the podium, but changes her speech when she sees the scarred faces of the laborers, and is beaten by the Japanese. The princess of Joseon was forced to change into a Japanese kimono and sent to Japan as a hostage. When she was leaving, all the maids of honor bowed to her respectfully to see her off. But she was gone for 38 years, and when she returned, she had been tortured by the Japanese. Diak was only allowed to have one lady in waiting, and her protection of Diak caused the Japanese to resent her. One night, while Diak is chatting with her maid, a group of Japanese intrudes and wants to send her back to Korea. When the maid refuses to leave, she is severely beaten by the Japanese. Diak can't stand it and orders her to leave as a princess. So she lets go. She knelt down and bowed deeply to Diak. Diak reassured her that she would be joining her in Korea soon. Only Diak knew that after this party, there was no telling when they would see each other again. Soon after, she received the news that her mother had died in North Korea. This destroyed Diak's last hope, and she became more and more desperate to leave this place. One day she waited for her chance. The Japanese were organizing a conference where Korean rebels would drop a bomb, and Han would take advantage of the chaos to escape with Diak. The plan was perfect. They talk to each other in the light about their plans for returning home. Diak's face looks beautiful and gentle in the darkness, but a mole in the rebel army tipped off the Japanese. They hunt Diak and Han down, intent on killing them both. Diak and Han escape to the sea. They were about to leave by boat when the Japanese arrived. He shot Han and it fell in a pool of blood. They took Diak by force, forced her to marry the Japanese, and gave birth to a daughter. Her daughter was a good girl and gave Diak some psychological support. She had given up hope of returning to Korea, but Diak heard the news of the Japanese surrender on the radio. It meant that she would finally have a chance to return to Korea. The Joseon princess had been a hostage in Japan for 20 years and finally waited for the good news of Japan's surrender. But she was told she was ineligible to return to North Korea. She didn't realize that North Korea had forbidden her to return and was pushed to the ground by soldiers. Then a man reached out to her and he was the traitor who had held her captive for 20 years. She roars and tries to tear the men apart. 
only to be pushed down again by the soldiers. He strutted back to his country, seeing that the traitor could even go back. She started laughing on the floor at her own ridiculous first half of her life. She could never have imagined that the country she missed would isolate her forever in Japan. Just because of her sensitive identity, Iak went mad. She was locked up in a mental hospital, and her daughter committed suicide because she couldn't bear the change. It was not until more than 10 years later that Anne finally got the chance to see Diak again and fought for her return to Japan. Her eyes were dumbfounded, and she clutched the thermos cup that her mother had given her. Diak looked at him with a blank stare. Her eyes light up, and she suddenly grabs him. Diak's tears of pain flowed down his face. On the airplane, Diak looked out the window at the sky, seemingly in nostalgia for something, but seems to remember nothing. After getting off the plane, Hen carefully arranged her clothes for her. Then a large number of cameras took pictures of her. Diak stepped back in fear and realized that a group of old people with white hair were kneeling in front of her. They were all the maids who had served Diak in the past. One of them was crying the hardest. She was the maid who had been sent home after going to Japan with Diak. Diak recognized her. She trembled and touched her face. After more than 20 years, she finally honored her promise. The maid was so sad that everyone in the room sobbed. Diak was helped by hand to return to her from her home. In a trance, she saw her father sitting in the great hall, touching her face lovingly, and her mother hugging her tenderly. Diak finally returned at the end of her life to the place she had held onto for 38 years. Diak's life was over. Her will was broken by the humiliation of the Japanese, but it was her country that really devastated her. When she heard that it was not the enemy but her country that refused to let her return, all her hopes were dashed. From then on, she stopped expecting anything from anyone and lived her life in a state of confusion. This shows how important it is to have a strong and secure country.